For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Today you guys a bit of a review video on a brand new tent from Outdoor Revolution. So this here is Outdoor Revolution Airedale 9 SE. So the Airedale 9s, it's new but also kind of not. The reason I say that is in many ways it's a larger version of the 7 SE, which they sort of had last year. But what they've essentially done is rather than having a one-sided double side pod, to make sense, they've now done a, a two-sided double side pod, i.e. you've got one of these on this side and then one on the other. So you have the ability of storage or additional, additional sleeping inspection for two either side. So suddenly you've got a, a seven main body, a two on one side and then a two on the other. So, you know, in many ways you are looking more like 11. Um, but I think people are probably move more having it as, you know, um, <clears throat> everyone at the back and then an extra person in here, me being one sort of storage. So that's sort of the main reason of coming is a nine is you get the bedroom in here included, whereas the other one you can buy additionally as you need to. It's one thing I will say is definitely for 2021, uh, Outdoor Revolution has definitely up their game in terms of, I think, the general look of the tents. A new colour scheme uh, really sort of makes very smart and looks very more premium uh, than probably in previous years, which I think is a big, big improvement. You've still got kind of their uh, 240 HD fabric, so essentially it's 150 denier, um, and it's 4,000 mil high steady head, so still a good level of waterproof levers. The new colour scheme makes it help feel a bit lighter inside, but like I said, gives it that air of, I don't know, it just sits a lot nicer. I don't know what it is, but it just looks a bit more higher end. Don't know why, but it just does. It's worth mentioning that not only the difference between the 9 SE and the 7 SE is just the side pod, but you also got this little side brow pole and additional door into kind of the front awning area. So that's also a, an addition that they've added to the 9. We've got a separate visit on the 7 as well. So if you want to see that, you can always check out that on our At Walls YouTube channel. I've pitched the, uh, the 9 on my own in the best part of probably about 19 minutes, pegged out, got out of the works, which, for something this size and this beastly with the double side is, um, I thought it was pretty good actually, to be fair, you know. Um, and that was my first attempt doing it straight out of the bag, but quite good. I would say it is obviously with the sheer amount of material you've got in here, it's definitely a bulky and heavier weight, so be fully aware of that when you sort of, you know, you come to looking at buying it or lifting it in out the car, and it doesn't come in kind of a roller bag, it's just a normal solid bag, so, for me, you know, that's one of the maybe slightly downsides to it. One thing you need to bear in mind as well is you've got these beautiful big crystal clear windows, so you get plenty of light throughout it. But what they've kind of done is they've still made them tinted, but took out that kind of oranginess that we saw in previous years from Outdoor Rev, um, which straight away I think it again helps to make it, like I said, look a little bit more premium. Um, but just it seems to work better with kind of the light and dark of the panels. The system you've got in it each beam is done individually as per our video uh, and it uses kind of uh, outdoor revs oxygen airframe system um, with their sort of dynamic speed valve so it's a nice big opening like you get on a dinghy so you can inflate deflate very easily but it also has got a pressure release valve built into it as well so you don't really have to worry about over inflating you almost get a little puff of air when you sort of reach pressure and it sort of lets you know that you're at the right one yeah again if you have an increase in temperature the basically air inside uh, expands and the air lets out from the valve itself. So again, it's one of the things that is sort of unique to Outdoor Rev. They do also offer a lifetime warranty on their beams as well. Um, it's a lifetime of the tent, not of the customer. Um, and really it's kind of stems a little bit sort of going back about six or seven years ago when they had a few sort of teething issues. Um, and it's something they've done for a number of years now. I've not really known anyone to have many issues. You get the odd one like with any product. Um, but generally the quality would be very happy with it. The little low level ventilation beneath the window allow it's going to help with circulation of air and on the opposite side to this which we can't see just yet but we will a bit later on when I bring the camera around you've got this kind of barn door kind of style in the opposite side of here where you can have it sort of halfway or fully and there's a full mesh door located behind that. Each side pod has also got its own entry and exit point so you can kind of go in and out of the tent, kind of as you please. Oh, hello. 
Mm, it's better to see you in there. Um, so yeah, you can again roll this back, and it means that if kind of you want that horrible teenager to go uh, in your side pod, they can come and go as they please, um, and not have to go through the main department. Or it just gives that extra level of privacy as well. And you've got a sort of like a toggle, toggled uh, ground sheet, which is sort of physically sewn in to the side pod, so it feels as part of the tent. But we'll roll that back just for the time being to get a bit more of an idea about it. The front door scenario is quite smart as well, that you've got kind of uh, a sort of a third, two thirds of fully open, uh, and it sits quite now, and you've got these beautiful big blinds at the front as well to get the privacy when you want to. So like out of here, I've kind of just brought it halfway, uh, a third of a will, two thirds are opened up fully. You've got these little retaining clips as well, which is quite smart, so it means that when you're sort of only going to a certain partition, um, the weight and all the stress when it's windy is not on the zip. It's actually got a small little retainer, which you can probably just about see there. Um, you've also got full zip pullers on the front as well, which gives you the flexibility of creating almost like this little veranda kind of feel. But you can sort of drop that down a little bit. So imagine it's obviously that side. And you have a bit of airflow, but then keep the dogs in or the kids in for that matter. Because of the zip system at the front as well, I quite like the fact that what you can also do is you can either go from left to right or right to left. So it's quite flexible in the way that you're not sort of always stuck with having the same orientation in the tent. So if the weather changes and you want to sort of, like I said, open that side up rather than this side, you could quite happily do so. Because of the way the sort of front door zip scenario works, you can take all the zips down to the bottom. The panel doesn't remove as such, but what I think you can do the lazy man's way of doing it, where you sort of just spread the panel out And rather than uh, kind of rolling in, tucking it and have a big sausage down the, um, the length, thank you for that, you can just do, just do that, bring it in the corner, and then it gives a, a much more of an open canopy feel. Um, and that really just sort of opens up and you've got a ground sheet supply for this area, which sort of toggles up and toggles down so you can have that trip hazard if you want or remove it completely. For me, I wouldn't personally have it in there just because if you have a door partially open it's, and the weather comes in, it's just going to collect on the ground sheet. So that for me, but then again, it's like if you have it in completely enclosed or there is additional canopy you can buy which uh, zips onto the front of it, make it bigger again. Uh, and it's the same for the Airedale 7 and the 9, so same one for either. Um, it works quite well to give you that sort of kind of enclosed area, then your wet area. But let's talk for a few more features on the inside tent and see what it has to offer. So now we're inside the Airedale, you can probably get a bit more of an idea for the sheer sort of width you've got in this space and also actually the depth to be fair. One thing I neglected to mention on the outside is that it's webbing storm straps on the front and back to give you additional torsion, which helps to get the roof looking really nice and taut. Space is definitely something you've got in this and I see this personally as called more of a modern dome tent. When we think of when people want sort of separate sleeping areas, they always think of the sort of middle pod with domes, um, pods come off the dome section, and it works well for the sleeping side of things, but the problem is the overall width is very small. Your living area gets sacrificed, and certainly the more canopy area at the front gets sacrificed for cooking. So this, I see this as kind of the more modern way of doing it, and it's a way that you can still accommodate how many guests you want to, but you still have a massive big indoor space. And the fact that you can obviously have, open this middle door up and have this one big area and then a front awning in the front, okay, it's going to be a massive beast, but if you're sleeping, you know, 11 people in here, you want it to be big, and you want plenty of room to roam around when the weather does turn on you. The depth on the canopy is actually quite, it's, it's decent size as well. You know, you can have a cooking unit in here, no problem. You've got a mesh kind of uh, partition for the window here as well for the airflow to run around. Um, and then also you've got a privacy curtain. So I think the way this sort of prefix part on the right-hand side to me, um, it sort of creates that almost like dead end space to sort of have your unit in that point. So that works really, really well. Obviously with the curtains, you've got the ability of uh, zipping down curtains. Um, so it gives you flexibility. You can have it sort of all the way up or sort of not at all. Again, you can go kind of go halfway with it and it means that packing away is a lot easier. So from here, for example, I can just take it straight up or we'll bit the mesh door to get that zipped up. 
So again, you've got full coverage, really nice. Uh, they've also changed in the pattern as well for the sort of 21 21 season. Yeah, again, if you want kind of privacy, but you still want the mesh, again, that's where this works really nicely, that you can kind of just lower that down, roll that through. You've got a good amount of privacy like so, but still allow ventilation into the tent itself. But for the time being, I find generally zips as well are easy to pack away. You're not fapping around too much. In the main way, you don't need to toggle it. You can just sort of kind of leave it in its own little pocket, which you don't really get the same with uh, the same with it, really. Great interior height, and we were talking about there's different points on the toggle points here to hold the door in place. On this side, we saw there was a, a door so you can get into the awning area, so it's a normal door itself with a nice PVC window. You've got a curtain as well there, but so if you have that sort of front sealed up as you might want to, you can enter and exit through this door when it's raining, and then you're not on the water coming dripping down and into the, the actual tent itself. You've got this kind of almost like riser ground sheet in the front section as well, so it feels like a sudden ground sheet, but you've got flexibility, you can take it out when you need to. The divisional door in here is a solid panel in the middle, and then mesh to the left, and obviously the fixed panel mesh to the right. Again, curtains on either side to get that sort of main barrier, but I foresee you sort of zip that up completely, then when you're in here dining in and with light on at night, you can leave that very, very front front awning door open. You have airflow coming through. You're not having the bugs coming through because they're being sort of protected by this, the fly mesh. Alternatively, if you want, like I said, open this up and create that kind of whole much sort of bigger area, you can roll this door back. And then you sort of just blend into one big mass dance floor. So we've got low level ventilation beneath these big nice windows and like I said as we'll bring the camera in in just a moment and talk about this kind of barn door which is talked about on the outside. Um, plenty of space in here, you know, like really, really big. Great headroom height as well. Me being six or two, I can pretty much stand up in the corner pretty much as well. I'm not too far away, so it means you get your furniture closer to, to the edge, meaning you maximise your internal space. Sleeping sort of scenario at the back here. It say it's a seven berth, so it's a 140, 160, 120. Personally, I don't think you're gonna fit three people in here. Um, I would say it's more of a true six or a very comfy five. You know, you've got a two, almost like a master. With a 160, you can fit a, a nice big camp, but in slightly deeper depth as well, allow that. You've got, uh, obviously, a nice big mesh panel at the back with ventilation points. Immediately, I'd say it's not the darkest dinner that's on the market. It is darker. Um, but it still cuts out, it helps to cut out a light. It's not gonna be completely pitch black in there because you've got this big, nice mesh panel at the back and that makes it a little bit lighter in there, but it's still dark enough and it's not dark into comparison to what you've seen elsewhere, really. You've got a door again, uh, so it, it sort of folds into a little pocket down there. I suppose one criticism, there isn't a mesh part on this door. That's the, probably one little niggle that I find that it, it's one of those things, I suppose, that it's not kind of out of revs, top end, top end tent. So you're not going to get every single feature, um, but you get sort of the mass majority of them as well, and size and space, and you know for the value, it's it's, it's pretty decent. You've got things like storage pockets located in the bottom, um, probably a spoon. So you can put things like keys and phones in there, and there's also a little zip for a cable entry point. So it means that you can actually uh, have the mains cable coming into the bedroom to charge your phone at night in the little storage pocket. Little hanging points in every single bedroom as well for hanging a lantern up, so you haven't got to worry about. Um, you know, taking a torch in with you, you can leave something there at night to read your book, turn it off, and then you're good to go to sleep again. Let's pick the camera up now, and we'll sort of go through a few more features about the actual uh, tent itself, as well as uh, get a bit more of a feel for the space we have inside. Thank you, Bunch. So yeah, like I said, Good sort of depth canopy, and like that dividing door sort of helps to open up the whole space. And you've got that when you've got that front door open, it does feel like almost like an open canopy, but the flexibility to do kind of what you want with it makes a big difference. And again, because you've got so many windows on this, you can kind of orientate yourself around, check on the kids as you need to. And to be fair, actually, there is windows in the side pods. So again, you can get ultimate of visibility, or you get a little bit of privacy in the bedroom section. So the side pods itself um, are located obviously in left and right. So it's basically exactly the same size either way. The left one's going to be almost pre-come where there's almost a wardrobe. So you've got a rail which will hang from this point here across to there. So it creates 
great entrance. You've got a little cable entry point down the bottom to have mains hookup inside of here. You've got clips for a bedroom. So at the top and in the corners, you've got clips. So you can actually sleep somewhere inside of here if you wanted to. Um, and then that, you've got the addition of door as well. So again, you, you've got your own entrance and exit. So you can store bikes in here. You've got a Sony ground sheet. Um, you know, or alternatively, if you don't want to see it completely, all you would essentially do is just zip the door up and it's just almost like a dead end storage space. So if I, uh, I mean, to be fairness, you wouldn't even notice anything behind it. You would just think that's an external door. Um, and like I said, just takes all the crap in many ways out, out of the main living area so you can maximize that living area. Uh, that's the barn door you see, so you've got two positions, you have a halfway or sort of fully open, um, and then you've got a full mesh behind there as well, so that's going to help with ventilation. So again, on a night time, you've got a mesh door that side, on the front, uh, middle door, should say, um, and that works nicely. In here, this is the bedroom, you get sort of supplied with it. Again, you'd put that up and sleep some inside of there. I've just toggled it down just to show you sort of the internal space for the time being. And then you've got the darker bedrooms, so storage pockets look at in the bottom. And then, like I said, it's a bit lighter in here, but you can got the, uh, the little cable entry points and then zip dividers. So with the zip dividers, you can obviously have it as, like I said, two, three, and a two, alternatively a five and a two, or you can kind of, like I said, do what you need with it, really. There's a hanging point for a lantern dead center in the middle. There's little cable ties leading down to sort of your cable entry points. So there's multiple cable entry points, not only in the two sort of side annexes is in the way, but there's also one located at the front. Bigger beams you've got located there as well, so a bit more of a hefty stuff to take the additional kind of size. Um, there is additional things like lounge line, there's like an internal roof line you can add, um, as well as also a bedroom. So there's our clips located on the floor here. So if for some reason you wanted to sleep 13, good Lord, um, you could quite happily do that, you know. You've got that kind of ability that you can, but we'll take you around the outside of it as well, just to kind of give you a bit more of a, an idea of, of it as it sits. But I do say it is a very smart looking unit. That's, that's a double barn door there. And like I said, width wise, it's pretty much as wide as it is long. Um, here's a true idea at the back here, what you're looking at. With those sort of twin axes. I think it sits really well. You know, you've got a nice big vent at the back there. You've got a double bits. <laughs> that gives you a bit more of an orientation around it. And like I said, the fact you can add and hold a sort of extra part onto the front of it, just to make it absolutely massive, um, works really, really well. But that's kind of a little video review. Uh, we will most likely have something like the Airdale 7 on display, but you kind of can see the concept of the 7 with an extra side pod on the other side, um, or something like the Kalahari. But let us know what you think about it. You know, one thing to bear in mind, obviously, it is a big pitch size, so it's always one of the things to double check it. Like I said, it is nearly as wide, well, it is wide as it is long. Um, so you would need sort of an XL pitch, I'd say, to fit this on a normal campsite, depending on where you go. Um, but I think something different, like I said, the new kind of dome tent with the pods on it, um, more practical, more versatile, uh, and as easy to put up in air form. So, yeah, really good. So that's the, our little Atwals video review. If you want more information on sort of the the tech, the spec, the size, pack size, the weights, the floor dimensions, you can check the link below uh, and it'll take you through to our website with all the details on there as well. So you've got all the information as well as the up-to-date prices and package deals that we kind of do on this model. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our little video view on the Outdoor Revolution uh, Airedale 9 SE.